I've never done a set of these, so it'll be a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm sure we can make it happen. Ooh. Ew. I probably broke something. That was probably done. What's going on YouTube? Levi at Old Iron Off-Road out here today, back on Mr. Big Bird. I do apologize for the time in between the last video that we uploaded. It's just been hectic here. We've been really focusing on some other customer projects, trying to move them forward so we can bring you content on those. Enough about that though. Today, we will be installing a set of bumpers from GRC Fab in Cleveland, Georgia on Mr. Big Bird. You've probably heard me talk about it before. The 8800's factory chassis don't really lend themselves to heavy custom bumpers, so just be aware that this isn't something that Randy necessarily sells to the general public as it does require some extensive modifications to the chassis to make sure that it will properly support these bumpers. On Big Bird, we've got a big heavy duty rear cross member that we custom built. We have a custom cross member in the front as well to support all that stuff. So we're gonna throw on a set of bumpers and we are also going to reline the slider tracks for the windows, hopefully get that accomplished. A um, Couple of milestones and setbacks on Mr. Big Bird. We had some problems initially with the ECM. We were under the impression when we had put this truck together that the previous shop had already set up the ECM for that's delete and the emissions delete. When we tried to fire the truck up for the first time, we found out that it had in fact not been done. So we had to send the ECM off to our guy, get it all set up, put it back on the truck, fired up, runs great. Then came our next issue. We appear to have an oil leak in the back of the engine in between the transmission could be the back of the oil pan could possibly be rear main seal we're going to dig into that but yeah we're going to jump on jump into the bumper install first get the front and rear bumper laid out get the tracks relined on the windows and we'll even give you a good once over the engine we'll let you hear this guy fire up so make sure you stay tuned for that let's jump into it front mounting area on this bumper is probably a little different than what you are used to seeing. That is because this winch bumper is designed to carry an 8274. If you're cool, you know what that is. If you're really cool, you have one on your truck, you know, because I have one on my truck. Just saying. Anyway, this bumper is, like I said, designed for the 8274. Randy's bumpers come with tons of options. We've got D-ring clevis mounts. These are super heavy duty machine pieces and these are not just butt welded to the face of the bumper like a lot of your typical cheaper off-road bumpers are. These actually sleeve through the frame and are plug welded on the back side. So if you rip one of these out, you have effectively totaled your truck or somebody else's truck. They're in there. So we also have options on this one for a couple of light tabs that are gonna sit beside the, behind the face. Now again, Randy does offer these in a couple of different configurations. You can get these, pretty much the base of the bumper itself is standard, but they do come available with different winch mounts. You can get them plain Jane, you can get them with D-rings, without D-rings. He really does a good job of accommodating the look that you wanna go for on your truck. Um, and just to mention, we're not gonna turn this into an entire episode about GRC bumpers, but he does actually offer an 8274 specific factory Scout 2 winch bumper that looks identical to the worn um, original production winch bumper. Really nice piece as well. So as you can see, we have a piece of two by four rectangular heavy wall tubing on the front of our chassis. And to make the bumper fit and play nice, we are actually gonna drill two holes in the appropriate location. And we're gonna cut a couple of pieces of heavy wall tubing and actually sleeve the frame. We like to do that versus just clamping. The tubing itself is heavy enough to support the bumper without sleeving it. We just like to sleeve it. It just adds extra level of reinforcement. It just really shores things up as far as making the bumper install nice and tight. So let's make that happen.
you're still watching, if you would do us a big favor, click the subscribe button, hit the like button. Also reach over and click the bell icon for notifications when new videos are uploaded. Thanks. Hot glitter, hot glitter. With the heavy duty attachment points, the clevis is sleeved through the frame, and an 8274, this guy should have zero problems pulling out all the stuck Jeeps. So moving on to the rear bumper, Randy had actually cut us some mounting brackets, and the way these were gonna work was these three pieces key together, and this is supposed to weld over our rear cross member. The only issue that we have is this is actually an old four cylinder chassis. The body sits an inch lower on the chassis than a V8. So we ran into some interference issues with the tailgate. So instead of bothering Randy and having us cut some new plates, which I'm sure he would have been more than happy to do, um, we actually just traced these guys and used what we needed and kind of threw our own little dealio to it. And this is what we ended up with. This steps us down an inch and then we added this little plate that will weld back in and box in the top, but still allow access from the bottom to get your bolts in there. So we're gonna get these guys tacked up, welded out, let them cool down, get them bolted to the back of the bumper, bumper set up on the chassis, figure out where these guys need to go, get everything marked, ground down, tacked in, we'll be in business.
moving on to the next part of the day and what we're trying to accomplish. Again, this guy was equipped with sliding glass windows and the felt has long since deteriorated and been gone. And you can imagine that that rolling down the highway would be extremely annoying. So we're gonna pull this one out. We're gonna clean up the bottom channel, get some paint in it. It's a little crusty. We're gonna put new felts in it. So that one over there has some wonky stuff going on. It's been repaired at some point with a bunch of rivets and some straps of aluminum. This one has been repaired as well, but it was a little better repair. This one has actually been TIG welded back together. So I'm gonna pull that other one off too. We're gonna to get it cleaned up and TIG welded and get it relined as well. I've never done a set of these, so it'll be a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm sure we can make it happen. something that was probably done. And boys and girls, it's gonna make us work for it. That's cool. If I can get my arm in this guy or not. Hmm. Oh man, this is gonna be real fun. It's gonna be real fun. Oh man. I don't know, dude. I'm thinking we're gonna have to cut these. Yep. Let's put some penetrating oil on the other side. These two, I think we're just gonna drill them. We'll be a little careful, a little more careful on the next ones. We got the window channels torn down and this is gonna be a little bit more of a project than I had anticipated. A couple of things are gonna slow us down on this and make it where it's not necessarily something that we can complete today. We've got a couple of these little oddball cage nuts that actually clip into the inside of the track and that is what the bolts bolt through to hold the uh, upper channel in. Uh, obviously this is a 60 year old truck so some of these broke and I can't find specifically these. I did look into finding some very similar on McMaster car. They're flat, they're actually intended to be welded in, but they've got a two inch spread and I think I can actually put them in a break or fold them on the edges and make them where they'll snap in. We need a couple of clips that are, that go in the actual door shell that hold this guy in. And I kind of intended on having to reuse these, but um, these are pretty gross. They're gonna take a little bit more effort to clean up than I anticipated, so that's gonna be a long haul. So I think for today, we're going to get this guy repaired. You can see where it has been just kind of pop riveted back together. The frame must have broke along this joint at some point. And I think after that, we're gonna let you guys hear this guy fire up. We're gonna do a good solid walk around video of it with the new winch, the spare tire mounted and everything. And uh, I think we'll call that a wrap.
So the window channel repair went well. We welded up no less than 50 holes around the outer perimeter from where existing U rivets used to be. We've got some parts ordered on the master car. I was hoping that was gonna be something that we could bang out today, but like I said, working on 60 year old trucks, sometimes things evolve and turn into a bigger project than you anticipated. We got the winch bumper on, we got the winch mounted, we've got the spare tire carrier mounted, we got the spare tire on. I think we we're looking pretty good. That was a good day's worth of work. Now brings us to the point, I'm sure if you're still watching, you're still hopefully paying attention, does it run? Well, let's find out. Power on. Radio works. So I believe that's all we've got for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope to have some more content coming for you soon. As always, enjoy.